Hello, it's John Lord here, and um, we haven't done a video in for a while because it was raining the whole time. Not that would have made much difference because we have a solar farm being built next door, and click, 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 but it's up at five o'clock, so it's half five, so we get a bit of a chance. So between weather and solar farm, we haven't been able to do any videos. The whole of uh, July was very wet, and funnily enough, uh, a lot of plants really liked it. A lot didn't. The hydrangeas, the normal hydrangeas loved it and the ones that were damaged in the frost earlier on they just bounced back and they're just fantastic. Even the paniculus, look at that the early sensation, it's just fantastic. Now that's, that is a, is a classic plant. What's good about it is that as the flowers fade they go pink but because it has a few different flowerings you have the white of the new and the, the pink of the old, it gives a lovely three-dimensional effect. And look at even here, the, the, the rhodos, how healthy they are. Look at all the buds for next year's flowers, how good they are with all the rain. And look at this one, this one has never been as good. The, the hot chocolate, the, the aspira hot chocolate or ch chocolate mocha. We, we actually did some work behind here. We took a load of plants out from behind, tall stuff that was, that was taking light. So we're gonna get more light in here and that should make it a bit better. It's, sometimes in gardening it's the behind stuff, stuff that, that that's not very glamorous, that nearly the most important. It's the stuff, the background stuff. Now, um, the, the, on the other hand, the roses got very, got black spot. Now it's typical, I say the roses got black spot, I look at one that hasn't got any, and that's flower carpet pink, zero black spot. And what you need to do, what do we, start of August we are, if you cut that, now you can, there's no point in doing that at this stage. If you cut that hard back, well, there's a bit of black spot in some of the older leaves, but it's obviously, so, so anyway, if you have black, black, bad black spot, flower carpet pink is the one to go for, for the flower carpet. And uh, so we need to spend about, about a quarter of an hour going through it and being fairly vigorous with it. And that will that will be in full flower by about the first week, second week of September. And this is the small North Polyantha. It's one of the fairy roses. Same carry on. And that's weed. That weed there is geranium sylvaticum, native to not to Ireland, to most of Northern Europe. Really, really good. So we won't we that's self sown, so we won't take that up now. We will find a place put it nicely um what else oh yes look here the pathway here i put some veronica gentianoides here and they're all being trampled down so what we have to do is if you can't beat them join them we're going to have to change this we're going to have to change the path and make it wider so it's going to go like this finish off like that because when you're dealing with the public that's what they do and you just have to get used to it so we'll have that path that bit wider and that would be the end of the trouble there's no point there's no point in trying to blow against the wind the, bl the wind blows the wind blows a bit a bit harder than you and probably children are doing it but like isn't it great to see the children they never complain when it's kids. Now, a bit more of that. Very therapeutic. I should, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking I should sort of have therapy classes and get people to cut my roses back and then they pay me for doing it. Hmm. Um, we had, uh, what have we got here? Yeah, we had um, the globe thistle and uh, the echinops and it got very badly done green fly a few times I, I didn't even I, I removed some of the shoots and the new ones green fly again so I removed them and they came in last week this flux and look at the color of it we take one little flower off it's not very different from that very different from that now I got in 10 or 15 and by the time I was going to plant more and the customers only left me with three I would like to put another one here but what I'll do is 
next year when they come up i'll split one and two and put them there and anyway, that's that now this is something we did today we had a buddly here There's plenty of sun here I took it out because lots of buddleys. This came in and it's uh, Russ Tiger, Russ, 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 uh, what's it called? Russ Typhina, Stag's Horn Sumac. It's called Tiger Eyes and it's a bit different. So I wanted to get, get one down before they were all sold. It's got plenty of space here and it's got plenty of light. And the other thing is, let me see. I saw something here earlier on. That's the Persicaria coming back again. That's the one I've been digging out for the last while and it's, it's still coming back. So that whole thing has to come out. It has to, but that's the thing about perennial weeds. You just, you just have to keep at them and at them and at them. And you have to win 100%. You're not 99% because the 1% and they'll come back again. You have, so I will keep at it until it's all gone because uh, that's the only way. And then you're finished forever. I planted this rose here and it looked a bit underwhelming it's called rosa mutabilis chinensis mutabilis and it's a bit small with the big leaf things but it's up here already and it will get up to here and this is too leafy there's too much of it so we're going to have to take a piece of that out and i have to say it was not magnificent this year so we take, we'll make it smaller. These are the ones I planted, I dug up and planted last month. And look at absolutely fine. Really all coming back. This one here, the Aruncus, the Veronicastrum. Really, really doing well. Now, what we need to do with them is to go, there's a lot of small weeds go through them like that and then put another mulch of bark that's the finish and that'll be it this, this, is, this will be for the therapy class as well David I think we'll give them a bit of therapy on the roses and then give them a bit more therapy And that was a geranium, one of geranium sanguineums, and I thought it might reflower, but but it's not reflowering. But now let me think. I'll go over here. That's that's a tiny monster, and I cut that flower, I planted that in full flower, and the flowers went away, and I cut it back. And look at it's in loads of new flowers so all all august we're going to have that in flower that's a sanguineum tiny monster now here's occasionally you get a plant that is a bit of a revelation and this is a crocosmia called limpopo and it has unlike most crocosmia it has a bit of pink in it and it's from a distance it shines a good few customers in the last week have asked me uh what it is and have I got it but it is that bit, definitely that bit different and I like the medium-sized crocosmias I find the large ones tend to fall over medium-sized ones are the best now in the last video I, I cut this back cut the, flat, the flowers off this it kill you but I didn't cut back far enough I should have cut back right into the heart look at the lovely foliage that's come out and if I, had it, if I had it done that properly, we might have got a second flowering. But even without a second flowering, it's got nice, lovely feathery foliage. Yeah, that's that. Now, what's next? Yes, here, this is next. Um, we had... Um, Miscanthus in here, really nice miscanthus. And what has happened since they were planted? The, the, there's a lot of growth from the trees, the shrubs, everything else, and it, it is not getting enough 
light and it's going for the light and it's falling over and flopping and looking terrible. So we dug it all out today and put in some Minarda. And I have not planted Minarda for about 30 years. For some reason I went off them, but they are very different. And if you look close in, you can see all the new, new growths shoots low down so that will fill in very quickly now some people say um and the problem i had with minarda before was in a very dry situation they're inclined to get mildew and they do run a bit but their control the running is controllable so i think that that will, will work very nicely there now uh run a cast from that we cut back cut back there see where it was cut back a little spot there look at it now in full flare and it's not going to fall over and full of bees and that's coming out that's madame Molier. that's coming out that that uh that, that it's the only hydrangea that hasn't performed so it's a big clump so we'll plant another hydrangea in its place you can see that one did perform and you can see what the good, I was going to say the good weather. See what the bad weather has done. Now, what, what the, um, the hydrangea would say, no, this was good weather. It was bad weather for humans. It was good weather for us. Look at how strong the new shoots are. The thick they are. How healthy they are. That's the rain. It's done that. And it's one of these ones that's conflicted. Am I pink? Am I blue? Am I pink? Am I blue? Can't make a smile of I kind of like that half and half. And the transparent. And behind, we look behind, we have the hanging, the hanging tails of the Sangrasorba pink brushes. Really, really good. And this Sangrasorba here. Look at that one, another hangy down one. We take one away. Perfect foil for munch. That's the munch. Now, let me see. Um, where will we go next? I can't believe it. It's so still. You feel like you're in a different country when you get no wind in Ireland. Wind here. See the way they were knocked over. The miscanthus had it all knocked over. The miscanthus was coming to here, so it, it was sort of brutal thing to have to do. But you see, miscanthus is a very flowy grass, and you can't tie it up because you lose that flowiness, and there's no point. That was nearly dead from the late spring frost. That particular hydrangea. You can just see how bad some of it is. But look. It's still coming and flowering very well because of all the rain. We planted just yesterday. I had a, a, quite about four different things and I planted this. The reason why, when I was in America last year, I was in the Botanic Gardens in San Francisco. If you're ever in San Francisco, go to the Botanic Gardens. Really good. Really, really good. I'm very, very impressed with the standard of maintenance, the way it was, everything about it was good. And I have a photograph of myself under one of these and the leaves are about the size of a dinner table. The thing about this is, is the gunner, it looks like rhubarb when it's small and it doesn't do anything but because it's not particularly decorative. But when you get massive leaf, you get this woe factor. And I'm hoping that's it's sort of wet here. I'm hoping this is going to be really massive and it's going to be the main plant here. They're all different. I want the different textures. And look here. Third year. First year was two or three flowers. Second year was reasonable. And third year, look at how many flower stalks are on those plants. That's Sunningdale silver. And it's, look how tall it is. And it hasn't put, even started putting its flowers out. That is going to be amazing. So that's the one, but you do need space for them. 
for the miscampus or for the pampas parted area and you do need oh an open situation where the wind can, you never if you if you use and you can never use them people say i can use them for screening no they're not for screening they're, they're for the specimen in a lawn or in gravel where the wind can get and the wind sort of keeps them clean and it keeps them okay but if you have them anyway shaded they're just never right they're designed for the pampas of argentina now just notice this the flux it was doing it just i was away for a bit and look how good it's done once again thanks for thanks for the rain and this is what happens when you don't cut back the veronicastrum falls over so we cut them back with no mercy and every day this is getting better it's persicaria runcinata uh, i think it's called purple fantasy and in, that will cover all that soil next year but it's really now it runs at the root but it's easily controlled what we got here yes you can see more black spots in these roses now they now i'll actually go a bit further down show what happens you cut it back here and you see the new the, the new new growths that will flower this year what next yes the the, the white ones i find white shrub roses this one is kent they are the worst for black spot for some reason they are really really bad and that needs a good going over but it's it's going to flower again but it just needs a bit of work oh here here's a problem that's the four years that's paul's best yellow it's sort of second best yellow at this stage ectocosmic that whole lot wants to be taken up just the whole thing taken up and replanted about a quarter of it replanted, freshen up the soil, and then you wanted to do it again. About once every five years, lift a lot, uh, split them, put put a bit back, and then they off they go again. But it's just getting congested. That's why it's gone browny like that. The leaves. You have a look. Now, uh, what else have we got? Oh yes, Helianthus. That's the that's lot and gold. They are all great. All those helianthus, uh, lot and gold, uh, Capnock star, uh, morning sun. They're hard to get, as I said before. Um, they don't look well in uh, in a sales pot, so you don't see them. But they are, and they they really are good, really fantastic. If you can get them. This one. I few people. It's funny thing about this plant. This is not a helianthus. About six people this week asked me about it. What is that plant there? Can I get it? Where can I? It's just so it's just different, hasn't it? It's, it has a little flower on top. Uh, the willow leaves, the willow leaves, some flower, but it's really just so unusual, so different. And I've lifted it and moved some here. In there, and it's totally lost. So we're going to move it somewhere else. It would actually be good in gravel, maybe. Maybe here. Hmm. Now what else? Oh yeah, um, Helleniums. Plant, it's funny, a plant I was against for years and then I started growing them and then I got to like them and like them more. And now I'm kind of, I got a bit, I've gone kind of mad for them. I planted these today. Now it's a song. What's the song called? Goodbye Ruby Tuesday. They're called Ruby Tuesday. And we take one away. One little flower. And someone was saying, oh no, don't plant them because we have we have them beside us. But look, isn't that totally different? Very different colour-wise. So they're and they're slightly taller. So they they went there. We had we had two 
uh, very nice for Cosmos, but it's too dry with the pine trees, but they'll just be perfect there. Now, next. If you have full sun, driest ground, very hard to beat sedums, the big sedums. These ones here, that's Sedum Autumn Joy. It's one of the older ones, older varieties. It goes lovely pink and uh, it's, a, it's a landing pad for for butterflies, really, really good. You have, it has to be in an open situation. Facing full south. Um, that lovely Simply Peach, that's that rose, Simply Peach, Harkness Rose, really good rose. It's gonna flower again. Now it's a bit, and um, the, 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 the beech tree is starting to suck all the water out. That's the problem. Now, the Hellenium, the Deadhead, this one, I don't know which one it is. Take your time. And we'll get another flowering. We should get another flowering right into, right into September. So that's, Heleniums are great. But I do think As a general rule, if you're planting Heleniums, go for the burnt colours, the, the, the brownie colours, the, the, because for the simple reason there's very few, few other plants that have that shade. Like you get a lot with a lot of yellow flowered plants, but you get very few with that, with that bronzy look, and that's the one to go for. And let's see, yes. I had to plant one dahlia. That, that dahlia spent the winter in my garden shed. It's Bishop Alanda. So I don't I'm not that type of gardener that like a, a lot of show gardens that they they bring a lot of stuff in and then they put it we don't have time, we don't have staff. But that's that's my one concession to that type of gardening. I call it flower pot gardening because grow a lot of stuff in flower pots, plant them into the ground for the summer, take them out in the autumn, put them away, take them back out and put them in. I, I'm kind of like put stuff down and that's the end of it. But of course it never is the end of it because yeah every now and again you do have to go to an area and kind of pull it apart and put it back together again you just have to do it you know because that's the, nature's like that now what else oh yes we finish off around around here these were planted this year in video They're dug up in full growth and look how well they've done Uh, didn't flower, that's uh, buff tal I think it's buff talmus speciosum. And look, didn't even notice. Look at that, it's like it's the artichoke. Isn't that funny? The um, hydrangea annabelles were a little disappointing. Uh, the one hydrangea. Uh, they got too much. When they get too much water, they grow too strongly, and then they tend to fall over, and that's what's happened there. Better off than strike. And here's here's called fresh yellow. That's a younger plant. They're younger, so you can see the way they're better. They don't have any brown tinges or anything on the leaves. Now, uh, yeah, I wanted to finish off here, but I'm not sure what we're going to do is we're going to make a change here. We're going to block off here. We're going to plant all this. All this is going to be planted. And we're going to, where are we? we're going to take these out here. And we're going to make a path in there. So we're going to be able to walk around here. And we're going to, path is going to go like this so I'm going to be planted in there and it's going to go like like that and like this in there and what we're going to do is piece here nice seat looking out that way I have a seat here now that's the theory the practice will be totally different when the man with the with the digging machine comes along and 
we've completely changed our mind. We might end up putting the path here, we might put, but our initial thing is to put the path here. Uh, avoid that lovely acer. The thing, the thing about acers, those Japanese maples, you could lift that with a digger in two minutes, plant it somewhere else, and the acer wouldn't even know it was, was being moved because Japanese maples are very reliable moved and the thing about Japanese maples you can get this chainsaw and whoop whack them and they come back immediately the Japanese maples are so easy now that's us finished for today um let me see we have to finish off on something really unusual really good oh yes that's been moved that has to be moved that's 20 years old and it's sort of pride of place that has to be moved. No, but I have to, we have to finish off and we always want to finish off in something special. It has to be something special. Not this. No, it's looking very good. The per, that's the Percy Carey, a bit taller. Not this. Oh yes, that has to be moved. That that's uh, trans uh, that's transparent, but it's too big because it's shading out the amazing Veronica stems behind Paul Erica. So I want to take those grasses up and have an all Veronica stem here. Um, Yes, I know what we finish off on. Not on this. Not on, not on this morning sun. We're not going to finish off on that. We're going to finish off. Now, some people say, I've got a big head. I don't have a big head. I've got a small head, look. See? That's it. Bye-bye.